What's going on guys? Hope y'all are doing fantastic today. So this past week was an awesome week in fragrances for me. I got to spend the entire week with Aaron Terrence Hughes. Well, not actually Aaron Terrence Hughes, but I did a full week of Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances. So join me and let's talk about my week spent with Aaron Terrence Hughes in week number eight of the Whiffs of the Week. Cue that intro. What's going on, my beautiful fragrance family, and welcome back to My Two Cents. My name is Brian, and this is the show all about boosting your confidence through the art of fragrance and becoming a lasting scent member. So, I've had quite a few subscribers as of late ask me if I would do some reviews of uh, Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances. Well, that inspired me to wear something from Aaron Terrence Hughes for an entire week. So I've only got seven fragrances in here. Wearing the same fragrance all day actually gave me the ability to give some of these fragrances a full test drive, to really know the ins and outs, figure out the thought process, the dreams, the artistic creativity that Aaron Terrence Hughes has put into his fragrances. And to be completely honest with you, that guy's a mad scientist. And I'll tell you why. As we get into week number eight of the Whiffs of the Week. On Monday, I started with one of my favorites, I believe it was in my top five, I can't really remember. I don't think it was actually, but I haven't really put a whole lot of wear into this, maybe a day or so, but wearing it again for another day and now that it's kind of cooling down a little bit, it's it's a freaking stunner. And it's Alpha Man. There is something that Aaron does to all of his fragrances. Whatever his imprinting is, his DNA, they're beast mode, dude. And this right here is one of those. This thing is a stunner. This is a fragrance that I feel can be worn all year round. It was a lot cooler on Monday. I mean, I woke up, it was 42 degrees, and the high was like 68. But this shined. Now, it starts out with nice, fresh, citrusy, and bright. Very bright. You get some fresh and clean citruses, and that is combined with a fresh and clean neroli. Now, this isn't like your typical like soapy neroli though there is some soapy cleanliness in there it's a little bit different you also get some dry clean vetiver woods and one of those woods being a really nice creamy sandalwood and man i'm gonna tell you what this thing projects 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 the first time i wore this fragrance i oversprayed and it became a little cloying it was a little too much this time i got the perfect amount of sprays i sprayed five sprays one two three four, and then five, one down my shirt. It was perfect. It lasted me 12 plus hours. And within those 12 plus hours, the projection, the sillage was at least four or five hours. It's crazy. It's nuck and futz what he has done with each one of his fragrances. You also get a lot of musks in this and a lot of clean musks. And that's where I believe there's also the clean skin accord in this, which I think is just really nice clean musks. Throughout the day, nobody was as dope as me because I was just so fresh and clean because I rocked alpha, man. And it truly made me feel quite alpha. So all day Monday, I rocked I alpha Tuesday and Tuesday. It felt like the first day of fall, which I think it was the first day of fall. And at least here, it definitely felt like it. The heat, the humidity, it's dying off. Now it's getting cool. I actually had to turn my heat on in my car the other day. I wanted to try out a new one. I really wanted to give this a full test drive. And it's Ohm. A lot of us complain about, you know, uh, Dior Ohm. The original, 2005 to 2011, then 2011 to 2000 and now. Now they have Dior Homme Original coming out in the States. Very interesting. That's a whole debacle from Dior, but we're not here to talk about Dior. We're here to talk about Ohm. If you like that Dior Ohm kind of DNA, ATH Ohm could scratch that itch for you. Starts out with a beautiful powdery iris. A little bit of like bergamot just to kick things off, but it's really that opulent, beautiful, orris concrete that he's using. And whatever he has done and whatever he has created, it's gorgeous. It is a beautiful iris, but it also has some really nice sweet characteristics. You get this really nice creamy sandalwood, maybe a little bit of cedar, but that's really coming out in the full dry down. You get some sweet tonka, you get some vanilla, and then that cedar comes roaring his head out in the full dry down. But that's blended so well with the iris and the sandalwood. It's a gorgeous fragrance. This is actually what I'll be wearing when I want to wear my old bottle of Dior Ohm because this kind of scratches that itch for me. And out of all the fragrances that I have from ATH, this is the one with the weakest performance and it's still eight plus hours. 
Uh, it's crazy. Has a good sillage, but not a huge projector. Probably in the first couple hours, good sillage, good projection, but then it sits quite close to the skin. This is a good office safe fragrance, more date night, I would say. And I think it's quite unisex and versatile. If you like a nice powdery, makeup-y, lipsticky kind of iris, Ohm is definitely your jam. So if you like Dior Ohm, check out ATH Ohm. Cause there's no place like Ohm. No place so like So we're Ohm. on to Wednesday. And it was super rainy on Wednesday. In fact, the whole beginning of the week was quite rainy. I had a lot of stuff I needed to get done. And the reason I enjoyed wearing Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances so much this week is because of all the things I didn't need to worry about putting on another fragrance. I had a lot of stuff on my plate between work and with trying to figure out my schedule for this week with uh, YouTube and getting ready for my dad's surgery. So I've been doing a lot of uh, taking care of my parents. I really wanted to give this next one a good wearing because first of all, I love the name. Second of all, I love the fragrance and it's <laughs> daddy. That's right. You can call me daddy. It's okay. <laughs> That's what I kept telling people every single day. They're like, what are you wearing? Because I got quite a bit of attention at work from this one. I was like, it's called daddy. They're like, oh, I'll call you daddy. Like, yeah, you will. So this opens up with a really nice crisp apple. And I really like the apple cord in here. It kind of reminds me of that Boss bottled apple note, maybe a little bit of Leighton, but it's an ATH. It's just different. It's a little bit crisper. You also get some like, I think bergamot or some sort of citrus, just kind of helping that apple out a little bit. But the apple, very predominant, really enjoy it. Then as it starts rolling, you start getting some really nice spiciness. And that's balanced very well with some really nice sweet tonka. And then flowing into the dry down, you get in some like gourmand notes. You get some benzoin and the benzoin's really nice. It's kind of sweet and resinous and you get a little bit balsamic. You get some rich woods and a slight animalic touch coming from oud, but oud's really just more sweet. It's not barnyardy. It is definitely a sweeter oud, though it just has just the slightest touch of animalic qualities to it. And then vanilla, and the vanilla is just blend very well with the rest of the woody characteristics. This is a stunner, and especially for being an oud fragrance, this would be a great beginner's oud. This will be amazing in the fall and winter. I freaking love it. And again, freaking beast. I only went with four sprays with this one. Freaking beast, super beast. I have worn this before. I went like eight, nine sprays, too much. Four sprays, perfect. So all day that day, I went with daddy. And I had people call me daddy all day. I wish it had been all night as well, but that it wasn't. What Next up, Thursday. I was feeling, I was in the mood for tobacco. So I went with tobacco. I've actually only given this one kind of full wearing, not anything like smolder. The tobacco in this is completely different. This is dry, crushed tobacco, earthy and dry and a little dusty, but just a hint of sweetness coming from vanilla. And that vanilla sweetness is blended really well with that dry, earthy, photorealistic, quite photorealistic tobacco and how the vanilla is blended with it, it really keeps that tobacco from being too earthy and becoming bitter. There is rose in this, but I don't get a whole lot of like powdery rose or jammy rose or sweet rose. This is just kind of an aromatic rose. And once you start flowing into the heart, you get this really nice Indonesian oud that just adds this perfect beastly animalic touch to it. it gives it just a little bit of filth. And I, I freaking love this again super long lasting fragrance. I'm talking 10 plus hours. I think I went four or five sprays that day. This is freaking amazing. And also turned quite a few heads for me at the office. Everybody was like, man, every single day, I have one of the same ladies that's coming up to me. She's like, every single day you smell different, but you smell amazing. I'm like, she's like, what are you wearing? I was like, I finally had to write it down for her. I was like, I'm wearing Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances this week. She's like, Aaron Terrence, what? Who, who the hell is that? I'm like, so I wrote all his information down. And she's like, I'm gonna have to buy some of these for my husband. I was like, yeah, most definitely. Uh, they are fantastic. And what's also great about Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances is what I found is that even though they are very unique and just beast mode and, and amazing, they're very mass appealing. Most of them, not all of them, but most of them. But all day Thursday, I wore it to back. Okay, come Friday, I decided to do a little layering combo because I wasn't really sure of one of the fragrances that I was gonna spray on. So I went with Fake. 
If you've seen my most recent haul episode, I'll leave a card right here so you can go check that out. I said that this had a very savory opening, kind of like barbecue sauce. Well, I love barbecue sauce. You can slap me in Sweet Baby Ray's and call me a short rib and throw me into the ladies, if you will. <laughs> wow, that sounds appealing. I probably should do that. Maybe that would work here in the South. Anywho, so I rocked fake and then I layered it with blood orange. Amazing, amazing citrus fragrance right here. Amazing. So I sprayed this on top of fake. So the blood orange, very, very realistic blood orange, but I also get some other uh, citruses in there, maybe some lemon, possibly maybe some mandarin orange, but it's really focused on that blood orange. But this has got some depth to it. Even though it's bright and citrusy, it's got some richness, some warmth, and some filth coming from patchouli jasmine sandback. And it just adds this kind of like spicy oomph to it. There's amber green in this as well, and that's where you're getting some of those animalic qualities from it. Awesome fragrance. But then, laying underneath that blood orange, combining really well with it, was fake. Fake has this spicy and ambery and synthetic oud, and that's adding some woodiness and just a tinge of animalic qualities as well. And those combined with the animalic qualities from blood orange just combine really well. There is also some patchouli in this, and the patchouli in this is a little woody and earthy and green. You combine these two right here, you have fresh, spicy, sweet, slightly oody, woody, amazingness. It was an awesome combo. Lasted all day, nine hours, though it sits a lot closer to your skin, but I got some citrus sweet and savory vibes going on for the day. It was freaking awesome. So great layering combo. If you guys have both of these, give it a shot. Blood orange and fake. All right, come Saturday. I went and watched football yesterday. I also had quite a bit of running around to do for the family. I had a lot of uh, soul searching to do. Um, and I went with one of my favorite fragrances with something that just kind of makes me happy. I think it's such an amazing patchouli fragrance and it's patchouli noir. This has become one of my favorite patchoulis. I'm about to do a, a uh, an episode all about patchouli fragrances and this is definitely going to be in there. Though I will say this, even when I walked in to watch football yesterday morning, Jeremy knows squat about fragrances and that's who I was watching football with. And he goes, are you wearing patchouli? He's like, huh, good nose, man. He goes, no, I know that patchouli. I was like, how do you know that patchouli? He goes, you smell like our friend Bundy, who's a huge hippie, and he wears patchouli. But I don't want to lead people away from trying this out because it's not that. I even told Jeremy, I was like, well, just let it dry down a little bit longer, and you'll see. And sure enough, later he goes, man, you know, you're right. It's definitely sweetening up. It smells really good, kind of chocolatey, a little fruity. And that's what I get from the vibes in this fragrance. It starts out quite bitter and herbal and green very at the very top. But that, to my nose, is kind of almost like, like grapefruit roll-up for some reason. So it's got this fruity patchouli. And then you get some dark bitter chocolate that comes rolling in. And that combines with that really nice, sweet, fruity, green, rich patchouli and combines to make this really amazing scent profile. Though there is some bergamot that kind of comes out like right up top, that doesn't stick around for very long. It's really based on that patchouli. You get some nice woodiness as it starts drying down. Some nice kind of dark and clean musks as well. It has a little bit of that filthy characteristic. But again, this is a beast. I mean, my friends were talking to me all day. They're like, man, we can smell you from my way. We ordered pizza and they were like, I think the pizza man can smell you coming up the driveway. And I was like, <laughs> but it is. This thing is a beast. This is a great cold weather fragrance. Though this is not a linear fragrance. It's one of those fragrances that starts changing from the top to the bottom, but it takes some time for those transitions because this thing, again, 12, 13 hours on my skin, it's ridiculous. This is a freaking awesome patchouli. If you love patchouli, definitely check out Patchouli Noir from ATH. But that's what I rocked all day Saturday. Sexy, loud patchouli. That's what he should have called it. And now it's Sunday. And Sunday, Sunday is made for smolder. Yeah, I'm going to be rocking this all day. I've already done one full wearing of this, a day and a half full of wearing. It's incredible. I'll leave a card right here so you can check out my first impressions of it. I love this fragrance. It starts out with some lemon in the rolly, and it's a very fresh combination. Not soapy whatsoever, not a whole lot of citrus, it's just very fresh to start out with. 
you get this frankincense and incense that comes rolling in and it just adds this nice smoky and spicy characteristic to add to the really nice tobacco the very realistic tobacco again the tobacco and small are completely different than the tobacco and tobacco Though it has some earthy, dry qualities to it, it's a very realistic and it's got some green qualities to it as well. You also get this really nice rich patchouli once it starts drying down, but the smoke in this kind of just, it's like billowing. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it turns into this like smoldering embers at some point in the composition. That starts to dry down just a little bit and starts to fade away. And then I get these nice kind of leathery nuances throughout the entirety of the fragrance. It's also a very long lasting fragrance. I get nine plus hours out of it. I'm thoroughly gonna enjoy wearing this all day today. It's a freaking banger. While watching football and it's nice and cool here, this bad boy is gonna shine. So today I'm gonna be rocking Smolder. Let me know in the comments down below if you've gotten your bottle of Smolder yet, how you feel about it. I'd love to know. So let me know. Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances are some of my favorites. I, I think they deserve more hype. I believe that they deserve to be in more list videos. They deserve more reviews because he makes some fantastic fragrances. There's not a single one that I've tried or that I have that I don't like that isn't a beast, that isn't at least eight plus hours. It's freaking amazing what he does over there. He's kind of a mad scientist. He's creating fragrances that are not only unique, but also very mass appealing. And it's it's very interesting what he's doing. And I'm I'm a fan. I'm a unicorn. He's got a unicorn for life in this guy. So that's it. Whiffs of the week, number eight, in the books. It was an awesome week full of Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances. And I look forward to wearing all of these fragrances again. And some of them might be popping up here and there during this fall on my weekly rotation. Uh, let me know if you want me to do any other full weeks of any other houses that I might have or that I need to get my nose on. Drop me a comment down below. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. Whoever your NFL team is, if you have one, I hope they win. Unless they're the Cowboys, the Giants, or the Philadelphia Eagles. Go Washington. So with that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's episode, do me a favor, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And always remember, you are stinking beautiful. And until next time, happy scent trails.